So shall we start? Alright, <laughs> welcome back to another episode of Singapore PHP Podcast and we are now at episode 4 I think Yeah, so today we have what with us on the on the podcast we have Hui Ren as well as Ryan so we'll all, we'll all be talking stuff about PHP what's up with PHP y'all <laughs> so uh, first up I think Hui Ren has some awesome news to share with us mm-hmm. yeah so we can talk a bit about uh, our latest like RFCs and stuff that's happening in the PHP world. As you know, we have already have a set of features that are affirmed in for PHP 8.0. And uh, these features, there there will be new. Uh, there will also be new features that are being proposed in the latest RFCs. And they might go into 8.1 or the minor versions of 8.0. So we'll see how it goes first. So before that, we can talk about who will be the release managers. All right. So let's take a look at the voting of uh, our, our voting list here. As you can see, there was like two rounds. So the first round was in April 21st, which was actually quite recent. Hmm, perhaps I before we go a bit further, maybe we can talk about the release process in, P- in, P- in PHP world. Would you like to give a quick overview? I think uh, maybe just talk about what, what, why, why uh, about what, who is it, what is the role of the release manager and maybe how features get introduced into into a release. So the role of release manager, the um, the one of the main people that that there was, there's actually like I think there's uh there's like one main person that's the release manager that will be their name being announced. They'll primarily be the one announcing mm-hmm. the new version. So when you see the emails coming in uh, from into the PHP mailing list, it'll be their it'll be their names down there. Okay, mm-hmm. that's one of the one of the main things. <laughs> then other than that, uh, I think they are also in charge of like what kind of like. Uh, they take on the main role of the PHP version itself as well. Mm-hmm. So like it will be responsible for uh, things that happen. But uh, I'm, I mean, all of them, all, all of the PHP internal team themselves are, they take on, they already take on the responsibility of, of, uh, being part of the core team mm-hmm. but in addition to like that they the php release manager has to be more commit committed per se to the version itself as well right right yeah and what about michael and zion what's your take on this uh, release manager thing do you think it's useful uh from the description, it sounds like purely administrative. So actually, do they like uh, probably control like the features or the uh, review of the uh, uh, pull request, things like that, or just purely like for marketing purposes? Yeah, no, so that's the question. I, I, I don't uh, sure the process. So I think they will also I'm not exactly very sure about this as well. Uh, Cause like, I still see, I still see everyone being involved in it. Maybe Michael's know better on like the, 
actual role of the release manager. Because I, yeah, because I still see all the other people still very much involved in whatever is being proposed. Mm -hmm. So it feels like the release manager is kind of like a shepherd that kind of like leads the leads the flock of sheep down the road and hey this is where we're going to and they kind of like do a bit, to be kind of like an arbitrator I guess like what what as in you know to get make sure things get moving and all that stuff uh, as I say it's a more of a, I mean, a feels more, more administrative right I pasted a link on the group chat the zoom group chat Oh. Uh, many uh, find Google uh, last minute this uh, interview with a PHP release manager, Peter Colcott. Uh, the third question actually, someone asked, What's the role and responsibility <laughs> of a PHP release manager? So, hmm. uh, yeah, uh, wait, do you want to click on the link and share that? Share that on the screen. Yeah, hold on. Wait, wait. Uh, okay. uh, I think uh, I'm I think I need to stop share first or something. Only, only. You go back to the meeting just now. Okay. Ah, the meet the meeting oh, control. Oh, okay. The Hold chat on. Okay. Uh, yeah, question three. Question three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it says here we've reached. Yeah. Derek was the main. Eric Wittens was the main release manager for PHP 7.4. Four. Yeah. Oh, 7 .4. yeah. Wow, it's a, it's a commitment for at least three years, though. <laughs> Until EOL, right? Hmm. Yeah. So the change of class, the change law, uh, compilation of files. Interesting. So these so are the, the, the roles that he played to kind of like get things through. So you take it basically three years which will be the life cycle of the of the, the release lah, or rather the from release to, to to release and to support it all the way to its end of life yeah so i think it's like it says here like how he is supposed to do coordination. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and he will be expected to work on a lot of tasks. That's cool. I guess okay. it shows the the it's a community involvement. Uh, I see letting more people in the community get involved with building this thing is so less stressful for on the main on the main contributors. Um. So I guess it's good. Cool. So, um, so you're today you'll be talking more about the things that we're proposing for version eight, right? Uh, I think in the like several months ago when we talked about the RFC three SD, mm -hmm. those were like most of the feature sets already. I see. Yeah. So what we will be talking about would be mostly about the future. All right. Rather than the current. The upcoming eight point zero. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. Okay. Yeah, this thing is a bit hard to use. <laughs> uh, I used to use running on Linux. No, the the this thing is like blocking. Okay. The zoom is kind of blocking me. Oh, I can drag it. You can drag oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, Oh, you okay. It was, yeah. I, I managed to drag because it was on top. Then I can't. <laughs> uh, 
after the space yeah. bar and remove it. Yeah. So I saw just now briefly. Uh, yeah, it's due or actually end of this year. Uh, December this year. Up there, the uh, the the schedule. The G. Oh, the general availability. Yeah. Uh, the alpha is coming out quite soon already, I think. Hmm. Yeah, then. So they went through round one, round two, right? I think the um, most likely it'll be. There is a. It's a lady named. Yeah, I, I remember. First, I was like looking through. But I've, Google where it says, yeah. So yeah, yeah, okay, it's down here, yeah. So first preference in the round one it was Sarah. All right, re earning, <laughs> earning majority of the votes like thirty three. I think she, I, I don't, know. yeah. Then after that it's uh. Gabriel. Gabriel. As the second preference. Yeah. Then the third preference. Yeah. Third yeah. preference is Ben. Fourth. Fourth is Ho. I guess. Mm -hmm. Then round two is for the uh because there was a tie. That's why it happened. So for round two, who was the winner? Oh, oh. it's very close. <laughs> it was Gabriel, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> so this this were the this were the voting results. Have you all met <laughs> any one of them before? <laughs> Did, have we even met any one of them before? Other than Derek, I don't think we have met anyone there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other than Derek. Yeah. Yeah, the hmm. other names are like unfamiliar in person. I guess the community has moved on and got to got more people joining it, so which is nice. I think there's more people in the, more people in the internal steam. Which is good. They should be part of the core team, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So now on to some of the RFCs that I was looking at. So the first one, one of it is uh, accepted in PHP 8.0 already. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, did we talk about this before? Yeah. I think we haven't, right? The constructor pro property promotion. Mm, okay. No. Yeah, so this one is already been accepted like in uh, PHP 8.0. Mm -hmm. So what it basically does is this, right? Uh, promote. Wait, this is the constraints. Okay. Oh, this is a, a bit complicated to explain. Uh, look at the first one. The 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 default syntax, the simplest one, the public all the way at the top. Ah, uh, wait, wait, stop. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. this is, so this is the boilerplate. Uh, they need to, there are four declarations, right? So this is the problem. So one of the proposal is the, the code block oh, just, uh, just below. Yeah. This, this thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, like how, yeah. how a lot of this is like boilerplate. Ah, uh, yeah, this okay. is, so this would be the... Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this, this would be... Of, like, this kind of looks... Similar to <laughs> Colin. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because um, Colin is also something like that. But it's at, 
instead of doing it at the constructor, it does it at the class around here, the, the class constructor. Yeah. That's interesting. And cool. they choose it because it's uh, adopted from the sister language, hack. Oh. Right. So you um, introduce, you include the scope in the initializer. In the yeah, I see. Yeah. So if it's not meant to be public, then you can change it to uh, protected or private. Is it? Or... Yeah, that's cool. So let's go through like what the constraints when mm -hmm. it's abstract. You can also do private, I guess. Uh, no, 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 cannot. So uh, if it's yeah, abstract, this cannot. Error. Uh, if it's a normal function, also cannot. Interface yeah. also cannot. So only inside mm -hmm. concrete classes lah. Yeah, because interface has no code per se, mm -hmm. right? No. So yeah. I don't think you can like define a variable. The abstract classes. I mean, this is a private. Yeah, it should so, be so it, private. It, it would abstract. I think if it's public, yeah. it should be okay. Pri Public or protected should be okay. Let's see if there's a. Uh, no, cannot. So, okay, wait, uh, so, uh, so you look carefully at the, the under the header constraints. Promoted parameters may only occur inside non -con abstract constructors. Non abstract constructors. So, when you think about it, right, this is a shorthand. So, when you use a shorthand, right, actually you will declare the variable and then declare it on a property on the instance. But, uh, Function, uh, abstract class, and the interface can never have an instance by itself. You cannot, you can never instantiate yeah. it. Yeah. So you cannot, you cannot yeah, set properly. Yeah. Nothing to set properly, so 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 it doesn't make sense to have it work on these three, three, three types, lah. Yeah. So it needs to be a concrete class where a user can actually say, uh, dollar x equals to new uh, person. Ah, uh, then it will work. Then the promoter parameters can be declared as properties on the created instance. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense because you need to have a instance yeah. in the first place. Yeah, because he, he assigned yeah. to the, to the okay, this so well. scope, right? If I'm not wrong. So if you look at the top, right, the top code block, you scroll all the way up, right? Uh, ah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a part that the this node, uh, this oh, as. Yeah. Uh, this will be the problem. Just have an instance already, okay, where so abstract doesn't have a cannot be instant. Yeah, you can't run this on the carry out instantiation. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, that's okay. a very nice shorthand. Is reasonable <laughs> to have these constraints, I guess. Let's see. <laughs> uh, what is it saying? Var is not supported. Mm. Okay. Okay, man, I'm just going to use value, I think. Uh, okay, lah. Yeah. <laughs> because it's happening inside a class, so actually bar doesn't make much sense. Normally, OOP, you have a public protected private, lah. You need to take the visibility explicitly. The scope, Where is the public okay. scope? Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. This is interesting. It is not possible to declare the same property twice. Ooh. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, there's no point to declare it again, right? All right. But uh, I do have an issue with this. Uh, so normally you are uh, for documentation purposes, right? Normally I will put all my properties public Public setting followed by public followed by uh protected setting followed by protected then private setting then private right so it's uh everything is documented at the top of the class so in this case if you cannot re declare right so you have some that's declared at the top of the class some then you have to remember to actually look at the constructor signature to see what other properties there may be lah. so you can terms of, yeah php dot blocks right uh yes correct but let's say if you at one glance right you want to find out all the public properties right 
you need to look at the top of the class as well as remember to look at the constructor la. so just uh, just uh, something to take note la. yeah okay, in, it is not possible to use oh. <laughs> type because it is not a uh, okay this one is uh it's a no-brainer kind of because it's it's like it's not part of the uh type properties yet i think like mm -hmm. i remember this was like the previous uh like when was this this was very long ago and i think i thought that was a callable i can't remember i thought that was a callable type uh. no ever see this one this when it was introduced for the type when the type properties was introduced it talked about how uh how callables will will not be supported but uh, you can search for the word call uh, oh yeah i, I lost the <laughs> oh okay yeah here we go yeah Cool. So I hope with this we have uh, shorter constructors. Yeah. <laughs> Less, lesser boilerplate to write. Less boilerplate, uh, yeah. Lesser boilerplate. It's quite cool. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat of a purist in terms of like making things explicit. So this not being able to do the setup um i guess it's a good thing it, 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 it improves i guess it does improve the readability a bit lah. yeah so it's just that there'll be a indirect side effect as in you know but you, so you're not familiar with this uh syntax and you see this yeah. funny thing in the constructor why are you setting a scope in the constructor which kind of makes it yeah but i guess if you think about it, it actually makes sense, right? Because you're now setting the, I mean, you'll be setting this, uh, 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 you'll be attaching this, you'll be setting this prop props to the local scope anyway, right? To the this dot props anyway. So I guess the making it explicit is in the constructor makes it actually easier to grok. That you know, okay, immediately, okay, this, this will be available in the, in this, in the, public scope or private scope or whatever scope lah. Mm. I guess yeah okay uh, let's cool. see what's next what else is there variadic parameters cannot be promoted variadic oh okay okay oh so the dot 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 I it? see no splat lah cannot splat yeah I think the password will die <laughs> The type of view. Like, technically, you can cheat. I think I, you can ch cheat around that, lah. But I guess, yeah. <laughs> you can pass in a hash and then do the. You can pass in an associative array and then use the, use some magic to turn your associative associative array. <laughs> well, we can just declare as a array, right? Yeah, you can. And then let it uh, so, so for this one is like the, uh, I think you can take multiple arguments and then you'll be inside the constructor, you become a array. La. But when yeah. someone constructor, you can pass like multiple arguments and it will be all consolidated into a string, the dollar strings are variable. Mm. Yeah. So in this case, the string is actually an array la, right? no, rather than the, the dollar sign yeah, string. When yeah, when you actually read it, you start a conductor, you start an operation as well. Yeah. So, I guess what you can just do is not do the spreading, then uh, just array. Yes, array. And then, yeah. Explicit property declarations and properties promoted from constructor arguments may be combined. A constructor may also have both promoted and non 
promoted parameters. Okay. Ah, okay. Fair enough. So I can mix and match up. Okay. Desugaring. Promoted properties follow a simple desugaring where the following transformation is applied for all promoted parameters. Hmm. Okay. So it's sim so it's a synthetic sugar? Yeah, then sugar. The visibility and the time automatically. So it's a, it's a shorthand of sorts. Uh. Uh, so that uh, I don't know the interpreter just copy the whole thing over. Yeah. This is a possible future extension to allow arbitrary expressions in parameter and property reports. Okay. Mm. Ah, okay. Uh, it's possible, yeah. I think you you can already do that with normal arguments, right? Is normal constructors. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, because it's just a synthetic sugar, right? Yeah. Not uh, not the point of this code plot is basically that uh, um. What to call that? Uh, they will end up is then constructing the dependency of get twice. So the thing is, okay, so so, so that there, there's a difference, uh. In this difference, um no, normally we will probably put public dependency plot because of new dependency. It will be like that. Oh, and then yes. yeah, and then the constructor, we will probably put prop equals of new dependency. So actually it happens like it becomes like uh, if someone don't passing any value, or even if someone pass, okay, if someone doesn't pass in a value for prop right. Basically, this instance will end up creating two de dependency objects, and one is listed. That's why you see, I see over that side they comment out right. So normally, yeah. so that's how in the notes above right, they say that the public properties, the prop the promoter parameters are uh, uninitialized. It is always set to now. Uh, so you see the first the first line on top of your screen that uh, it starts out in the uninitialized state. Yeah. So this starts in the uninitialized state. Uh, uh, basically now la. Yeah. Yeah. And then this props the constructor will assign it to the values uh, to the yeah. instance. So you only end up instantiating once la. Okay. That's still cool. If the promoted parameter is passed by reference, then the following assignment is also performed by reference. Ooh. Okay. By referencing. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> OMG, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, see, see. <laughs> so we uh, use a uh, pointer. Yeah, it's uh, a pointer. <laughs> Pass by reference. Okay. Uh, okay. Can. <laughs> Generally, the not a fan of pass by reference, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> The forwarding property assignments occur at the start of the constructor. As such, it is possible to assess both the parameter and property in the constructor, for example, to enforce additional validation. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, we can apply Z. Oh, that's nice. Z is a new function, is it? Um, uh, don't think so, cause it should be around since very long ago, right? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah, it's ah. it's just the simple as a, it's it's mm -hmm. like nothing. You know, it's, I see. 
So we okay. just throw, you say you will throw an exception if it's not true, is it? Or what? I remember seeing, I just yeah, saw it, it over there, it says it's a throwable. I think a false. No, it's kind of false. But it's right. also a throwable though. Uh, in PHP 7, second argument is a throwable. Oh, yeah. So you would so use. So what you so instead of if you uh, boolean, you throw an exception. Yeah, it's optional, right? Yeah, you it's yeah. gonna be done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah somehow where the, where there's code examples. Oh. Uh. uh mm, okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, there are other options that uh, you can pass the call back to actually handle it. Uh. I see. Okay. Assert options. That's nice. This the HP seven one, which is what they're doing. If it's true, you will say hi. If it's not true, you will just trigger. You just show an exception. Um, it, it won't do anything. Yeah, unless you turn on assert. Oh, okay. Uh, assertion as assertion. You said send it's assertion. Like, it's like a debug, uh. debug message. Yeah. Alright. Uh, if you make, if you set set assert exception equals to one, you basically throw the exception and show you. Oh, okay. So you, mm. if you don't put, so basically it's like a debug only for debugging purposes. Uh, it's not meant for like production applications to use. Mm -hmm. I guess you could I set uh, you can set set the Zen assert. Okay, that's cool. Oh, the yeah. It, so I was gonna ask about annotation. So actually, you still you still take care of the uh, annotation, uh? Although I'm not sure whether the PHP documenter and stuff like that will be able to read it. Okay, so oh, ah. this is a long list, a very long list for this uh, RSC. Good, that's nice. <laughs> Reflection. Okay. <laughs> well, PHP does not. Expose dot comments on parameters. Dot comments on promoted properties will be retained. Okay. So if we comment down here, so the dot block for the parameter oh. is together with the with the parameter. So the after the issue green, right? You will see you will see the normal dot block and the normal public property on top. You see the normal annotation after the issue green, right? Yeah. Um, after issue. So it'll, it what it means is it'll look like a. You look at the final syntax. Yeah, it, it will look at the final disugared syntax and yeah. it will... Okay. That's kind of handy. Additionally, two new methods is promoted, returns true for properties that have been implicitly generated as part of construction, as part of constructor promotion. It is true for parameters that have been resulted in generation of an implicit property as part of constructor promotion. Okay, let's let me try to understand this. So it's a difference between the property and the parameter. The parameter is probably talking about method parameters. The property is talking about class properties. So when you when you run reflection on a class, right? They say okay, these are all the pub public properties. 
then every property you can check is was this is this oh, a yeah yeah property? I understand now yeah was was so, this part of the yeah so parameter is actually talking about the parameter the method parameter for the constructor or any method. Okay. Inheritance. Constructor promotion can be used in conjunction with inheritance, but has no special interaction with it beyond what is implied by the dish going. <laughs> the typical use case involving inheritance is shown in the following based on an abstract syntax tree representation. Okay. Oh. Okay, let's see. Abstract class node. Construct location, start location, end location, first now, first now. Okay. So that means it's basically what it means is inherit is inherited. Oh okay. Um I was wondering about the extra outcome they can use the promoter parameter that realize that it's protected. So is uh so the this thing doesn't the this arrow for property doesn't apply. So uh when they call the parent constructor, the parent constructor, the no class right, will actually create two protected properties. Yeah. And then uh yeah. So in this case, there's no there's no need to redeclare the protected. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's. Oh. That also helps, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Uh, they show the sugar syntax are much easier to see. Let's see. Okay. Oh, this the the sugar one. Yeah. Wow, super long, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Why? Why? Oh, okay. Okay. Now when you have a lot of parameters, then you really see the difference in the boilerplate, huh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is this is really long. <laughs> Wait, that's kind this of. Wait, that's kind of make your constructor. It, it kind of encourages you to make multi-line um constructor arguments, right? Like this. Yeah. So typically, not so. Be, there shouldn't be so many uh, uh parameters in the constructor. <laughs> well, it shouldn't. Oh wow. yeah. <laughs> Four, five, yeah. six, seven. I guess this example is kind of contrived, but uh, but ideally, if you're in a production situation, you would probably pass in an array instead of uh, instead of so many mm. arguments, right? Yeah. Or type, type, yeah, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. But uh, the downside of passing an array would be that the uh, its type. type definition is not. Hmm, that's true. It's not something that you can reference. Unless you do like a PHP doc per se. Hmm. So you will know what yeah. is being passed in. Okay, I guess you're right. Yeah. I guess it's better mm. to be explicit than to be implicit, uh, I guess. Okay. Yes. But I choose that kind of evil over <laughs> I usually choose that kind of evil over uh using of arrays. Yeah, I guess if you pass in as uh, arguments like this then you can type hints properly. Or you can pass in one value object that encompasses all these properties inside. Also if true. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah can also pass in a data class. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay. Let's see. It should be noted that. It should be noted that the property assignments happen before the parent constructor is invoked. Hmm. Which this is probably is why they, and... yeah. This is why you usually that, that you see in the example above that they want they would inc they would make you explicitly initialize the parent class. 
you go further up in the India example there over there the parent construct yeah. interesting okay cool what else is there for this one okay attributes okay let's see PHP 8 also introduces attributes. We need to consider how these features interact. Attributes are a lot on both properties and parameters. Should we take a look at this one first? Yeah. I think we haven't mentioned it before. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one was also like, uh, let me close the other stuff first. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's synthetical metadata to, to decoration of classes properties. Similar concepts, annotations in Java, mm. attributes in C sharp, C plus 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 tag. Decorators in Python and JavaScript. Okay. <coughs> oh. Oh. Um, kind of like double spaceship operator. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <sighs> uh, okay. Like a title in Chinese. You know those book titles in Chinese always oh, call yeah. it angle. <laughs> what what are examples of attributes are there? Do, do they have any example like uh, um, example like what kind of attribute uh, are we talking about? Like, they have a full attribute. <laughs> yeah. if, that, uh, if that counts. Attribute. Okay. Wait, so an example attribute is this. Class foo would be an example attribute, right? So if another class, we'll see. Oh, you can even, you can initialize by the annotation itself. Okay. I pasted a link in the oh. Zoom chat. So uh, I think it shows an example uh, of a uh, how attributes could actually be used. Uh. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, what's the... Okay. Oh, so it's like, uh, I think Android also is like the, the, I can't remember, when you make HTTP request, you can actually put some attributes to uh, specify whether it's a get method la, the GRL or the the, yeah, the, the those, uh, those are called annotations. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this is a bit clearer, yeah. Okay. Cat is calling you. Yeah. <laughs> Rang him in. Yeah. yeah. So I guess this is how it will look like. Oh okay. Then the construct is down here, right? The it accepts event of a type string. Alright, so what? Listen to So this is a string? Yeah. What? So but they instantiate the method, uh, the instance, and the. Uh... You usually use attributes or macros or annotations to introduce new functionality in, to kind of like inject new additional fu uh, features into a function or into a class, right? So I guess in this case, once you declare it and set it here, you will be introducing some new, new functionalities inside. Yeah. So 
these are like the examples of it. This one is. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. good. Like, you know, uh, all this. Usually, we would like uh, uh, use traits for now. Mm -hmm. I guess we we have like traits, mm, yeah, where we call use something, and then within the constructor or whatever we call those fun uh methods within the constructor itself. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's, it, yeah, but yeah, so it can, like, yeah, that means uh. I just need the right controller and then I put the uh, attribute uh, there, they automatically the route will be uh, configured. I don't even need to write in some config, config to actually create a route. Lah. It's like yeah. magic. Lah. Yeah. The downside would be, would there be any downside to doing this? Not really, but at the first glance, I think. Um, this will give more context. So normally, like your controller should be in some folder, and then your route config yeah. will be in some yeah. other folder. Things like you have to remember uh, yeah. oh, here, here you link it. But over here, you see everything. The context is all here already. So yeah, in a way, it depends. Uh. Yeah. The the bad side I could see is that, let's say you want to rename the route. That like one of the so called directory of the route. Then you have to. Oh. <laughs> okay. If let's say it's in a different controller, then you have to go down to the other controller. Ah. Yeah, like in this case where it is a controller itself, like a create controller. So you have to go down to the create controller. Let's say you decide to rename products to something else right then you have to go down to products uh wait what's up create read okay yeah crud create read yeah so read uh, you have to go down to products read controller then you go and change it yeah I'll go and compare yeah but of course that you can also argue that if you are changing something like that already then you might also be changing the class. So, yeah. Okay. So we sort of understood what is that. Let's go back to our, okay. Let's see the, without arguments, single argument, few arguments. Hmm. So basically all these are uh, this attribute and uh, the promoter parameters are uh, it's all basically to reduce boilerplate. Uh. Hmm. So this is how you add multiple attributes. Uh. Well, I guess you can multi-line or single line, I guess. Yeah, like how they do annotations in Java and Spring Boot, for example. Okay. <coughs> Name spacing. Okay. Uh, oh. So now we know about attributes. There's like quite a lot of interesting things you can do with it. Yeah, I think that's. Oh wow, it's actually quite extensive. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like how in Spring Boot when you have annotations, you add a lot of additional voodoo magic into into the into the Spring Boot itself, right? So. Same goes for decorators in Python. You add a lot of magic into it which sometimes can argue it adds a layer of indirection yeah. 
I guess the okay. The we want to talk a bit about the compiler and user and attributes. Ooh, okay. Compiler attributes validated at compile time. Okay. <laughs> User land attributes validated during reflection API access. Okay. Hey, look at the PHP code example, it's easier. <laughs> ah, oh. okay. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> I understood now. It's like a reserve word. Uh. <laughs> uh, oh, this actually hurts the brain I think so to too. think, to have to think so much. <laughs> I think uh, we, it's best to put it one side until you actually need it. I think we'll leave this to the framework uh framework developers yeah. to use it uh. i think as, as, <laughs> as, as developers ourselves who write code for people i don't think it's it unless you're really building something really huge i don't think it, 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 we, we will actually get to the point where we actually get to use this uh, yeah. i suspect yeah. this will be very handy for framework developers like symphony and laravel then they can basically use this as a way of removing a lot of the boilerplate that you would need to get things done. Uh, I think I've seen that, that, I mean, as I've seen this in practice in, in, in Django as well as in uh, Spring Boot, you know, so, uh, yeah. so basically yeah. I think you would probably go the same way with, uh, I think it's, 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 it's a nice, addition to our to the php language itself uh, the ability to intuit to use uh, something like this although personally i would i would have, i would probably have preferred if they've gone with a more conventional approach like with uh, decorators and annotations is usually usually an add sign right the add and then followed by the thing then actually they have uh, yeah for alternate syntax if you scroll the way, uh, there's a uh, the other uh, way uh, scroll up now, there's smiley. Uh. We oh, call it a smart. So it's a add colon. Okay. Yeah. It's. Uh, this is a. <laughs> uh, the void of. It's actually would be in a RFC. Okay. Uh. Choice of syntax will be secondary void. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, this. The ad, the ad uh, sign would be closer to how other languages or frameworks uh, use it. La. Like Java uses an ad sign, I think. Uh, Python de decorators will use an ad sign, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. I think only, only TypeScript uses the uh, decorators, right? I've not seen mm -hmm. it used in JavaScript yet. I've seen it in TypeScript, but not in JavaScript. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So it could be, it would be interesting. Um, uh, personally, I would prefer something closer to how other languages used to do it with the add sign. Uh, this double spaceship, I don't know. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it will be unique. It will be unique to PHP, but it's it, it, for other people who coming from other languages will not be very familiar. La. They'll be like, "What the hell is going on here?" Like, I'm still trying to get you over the fact you're using forward slash uh, as namespace. <laughs> or is uh, it back? Or is it backslash? Oh. Never mind. <laughs> you get used to it. So, after so a while, you get used to it. Yeah, forward slash. Yeah, so uh, you get used to it after a while. So it's fine. Is it forward slash? The namespace one is the backslash. Backslash, yeah. Oh, yeah, backslash, backslash. It's like that, so if. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> so, so you think of the graph, right? Y equals the S and Y equals the minus S. Ah. I see. Yeah, anyway, so it's still. Um, okay. Yellow. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting. Okay. Um, um, that's just my opinion. But anyway, moving forward. <laughs> I see. 
<laughs> yeah, but I like I like that they they split they decide to split R RFC uh into the what is supposed to do and the <laughs> syntax <laughs> into a separate vote so <laughs> won't get too confused or distracted rather. <laughs> Cool. Okay, this now we want to look at how we de sugar this. Okay, let's see. So we have this, right? Mm -hmm. And the attribute is the coach could de sugar in one of the four ways applied to parameter, applied only to implied property, applied both to parameter and the property. Attributes on promoted properties are forbidden due to ambiguity. Okay, let's see, option one. Apply mm. to only parameter. Apply to property. Okay. The uh, RFC is using option three. Mm. So applying both to the parameter and the property itself. Which one do you prefer? I think the tree should be the best, I guess, because it covers most of the use cases. Mm -hmm. Like you but, have to have a. Sorry, yeah? Yeah, but uh, if you are looking at uh, writing the same text without the promoter parameters, I how would you would usually write it? Actually, it'd be option two, correct? You never know. You might need to. Yeah. You might need the functionality in in the constructor itself, right? Somewhere inside the constructor, yeah. you want to do do something. So supposing let's say in the constructor, um, the thing is right. Um, supposing uh, you have attribute to create a route, a route. So, in the option two, right, the route is only created once. But in option three, right, the route may be created twice. Maybe lah, maybe. Although it may end up in the same effect lah, but uh, we, we, we cannot say for sure lah. Or let's say it runs some listener or runs some, uh, or, or trigger some event. I guess it depends on the type of attribute you're passing in, I guess. Yes. Do you, do you say? Yeah. So in this case, uh, sometimes say like give too many choices may not be uh, that good. Uh, but to, to me, to me, it's like uh, if I were to use attributes purely, right, without promoter parameters, right, option two would be hard. I would write it. Uh. Uh. You would be able to kind of like guess if it's a property or parameter, right, when you are using the when you're using attributes in PHP? Uh, yes, so actually at the bottom, right, just after this code block, it says about the is promoted. Uh, they will actually tell you uh, uh, you can actually use this promoter to decide in your uh, the reflection. whether you want to apply the attribute or if it's a property or if it's a parameter. But this is like implementation, implementation detail, as, as I said. So it's really up to the framework people if they are using it extensively throughout the framework code. Yes. Yeah. It's like <laughs> what you say also. It will only, it will be advantageous to place the attribute on only the property which could be open to such a change. Yeah. yeah. Just like Previously, where they had the promoter pro, uh, parameter, right, where they put equals new dependency, right, that is only run in the constructor. That is not, uh, that does not translate to uh, the declaration of the property. Uh, so the, the promoter, uh, the properties right, are uninitialized. So same thing, uh, is that fit the code, the instantiation is only run once. Right. Okay. Wow. 
Wow, it's one hour already. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And so... we only look at two hours. <laughs> hey, this, hey, this is very good. So actually, we got enough to cover, so... For the, uh, for like every meetup, just discuss one RMC or just time to do. <laughs> yeah, I I actually intended to like look at like several other one, but I guess we can cover those in the later meetups. Mm -hmm. So later actually, like, so actually, I think it's better to go deep. Yeah, don't, don't, don't skip the surface. It's better to go deep. So actually, okay. it much more value to whoever is listening to this right now. Yeah. I guess okay. it'll be sometime before this gets into the in, into the public public release, right? So I guess yeah, it does give people some time to think about it, which is nice. Cool. This section gives non normative coding style recommendations. <laughs> If constructor property promotion is used, it is recommended that the constructor be placed as the first method in the class and directly following any explicit declarations. This ensures that all declarations are grouped together and visible at a glance. Coding standards that currently require static methods to be placed first should be adjusted to place the constructor first. Ah, okay. So that's why I mentioned that now. So it's like that, so that you can easily at one glance right, see all the public properties. Since that now they are split to two places. Is this the uh, PHP dot block they recommend? Oh? The, the standard oh, wow. It copies the dot the dot block uh, parameter. No, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. It only copies the dot block if the dot block is uh put on top of the parameter itself. This is a method dot block. This is not the parameter dot block. Huh? So the this, this, uh, I mean, uh, this, this, uh, this is dot block for the method. This is not the dot block for the param for the parameter. So you get this distributed uh, into that though. You see? Uh no. So at the uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, when you go all the way to the top and it shows the sugar syntax, right? They were uh, uh, no top of the page. Uh. They actually show where uh, they put a dot block on top of the parameter. And mm -hmm. then when it's the sugar, right, that dot block for the parameter is copied over. It was shown just now at the top of the of the page. Yeah, it is copy over. Right. Yeah. So this yeah. is just a normal method dot block. Right? Normal method dot block. Okay. Wait, oh wait, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, wait, now I see this. Uh Oh, okay. But this is handled by the PHP documentation tooling. You look at the, the description yeah. text. Uh, this is not handled, this is not the, the sugar syntax by the PHP parser. Yeah. I don't think they will go and spend so much time to go and like copy over because you don't want to do it in. <laughs> You don't want to do it in runtime or com you don't want to do it in compile time. <laughs> no, but, uh, but, yeah, but for reflection purposes, huh? yeah, yeah, for reflection purposes, I think it should be done by the documentation tooling, but you shouldn't do it at, at uh, compile time because uh, you uh, have to. It... No, they still yeah. need to extract. Uh, Syntax tree, right? So actually, uh, uh, the thing is already inside the abstract syntax tree. Already. So the thing is, right? It is okay for the PHP. Do I call it compiler now or parser? Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. Okay, the parser, right? To actually copy the dot blocks for the parameter, but it is not okay for the PHP parser to go and single out the individual lines that. The one that you highlighted, uh, match it to the parameter and then copy over. Uh, that is not acceptable. So that's, yeah, why yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. Finally, it should be noted that the constructor property promotion is just a convenient shorthand notation that covers most use cases. A prom promoter property can always be converted into an explicit property with class. Okay, this one is really said earlier on. Yeah. Ah, you see? Oh, 
These are the three. Because I I use Kotlin as well, so I know then TypeScript as well. That's good. Then hack I I didn't use hack before. That's why I didn't know it wasn't. They can like, like slowly bring over all the all the functionalities and hack into PHP. <laughs> yeah. By the way, just for information, right? So the the time I was interviewing to become a what do you call that a a, a, a tutor at a school of computing. So I had to give a like, presentation, like show how I teach, right? So actually, let later on, the uh, Martin Hans he actually uh, the lecturer, right, for Steam CS one 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 F. Uh, he actually pointed out one mistake that I, I made. Uh, I confused method parameters with method argument. So he, uh, he was quite uh, insistent on uh, you have to be consistent in how you define it. So method parameters are what you see in the declaration of the method. Okay, in the method signature. Method arguments is when you call it. Those things that you pass in, right, those are the arguments. But the method signature itself, as in the part where you declare it, right, those are referred to as method parameters, not method arguments. Method arguments is what you refer to when you call it. Understand? Uh? Today I learned. <laughs> okay, so let's say I have a, let's say I have a function called test, and then it takes in a, it, uh, it takes a variable called x. So function test takes in the variable called x, right? x is the method argument. I uh, so method parameter. <laughs> now, okay. later, later on when I call it, I call test bracket 3, close bracket. The 3 is referred to as a method argument. Oh, okay. I, I, I get what you mean. Uh, so the time he corrected me, so actually, uh, so now, okay, so I have to be quite careful when I, when I speak about parameters and arguments. So that's next. Let's see. So who voted? Uh, it was already accepted, uh, so uh, <laughs> it's wow, confirmed to be. Wow. <laughs> okay, wow. Unanimous, almost unanimous. Oh. All right, we <laughs> people who are listening to this podcast <laughs> learn about <laughs> promoted. <laughs> what is it called again? Promoted arguments. Uh, uh, constructor promotion. Constructor yeah. promotion, right? So yeah. yeah. I forgot. I forgot the letter. <laughs> yeah, it should be constructor promotion. Yes, constructor <laughs> promotion. <laughs> Constructor okay. property promotion. So it's coming to PHP eight. So better beware <laughs> and know what it's all about. Yeah. Cool. We have come to about the hour, one hour point. Uh, I think we pretty much have exhausted our listeners. <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. I think we should wrap it up. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about like. You all like this, and will you all use it or not? Oh, Maybe Zion. <laughs> Zion, you wanna start first? With, do you like it, and will you use it or not? Uh, it actually removes a lot of uh. It really, really removes a lot of boilerplate, lah. Um. Yeah. So in my constructor, is the best simple constructor, right? Like, like what you see on the top here, right? Then yes, but normally if I do other things like constructor, then maybe no, it really depends. Yeah. You you take some time to actually get used to. Then Michael? Usually, yeah, and usually I like to put all the dot blocks out of the annotation, right? Then actually I will see my constructor blow up a lot. Right? Yeah, I agree with, uh, with Zion. It, it seems like your constructor signature would basically become quite bloated and big but i guess in the long run uh you are move you're basically moving a lot of the boilerplate into the uh method constructor or rather the class con class con constructor so in a sense it's a one place to document uh the things that your class would have uh, like all the public methods 
and maybe even some of the doc, uh, doc blocks that need to come together with this argument, uh, these parameters. So I think that will be quite interesting to, I think it's, I guess, fat constructors are here to stay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we before we get get the times, I think we just, it's a good it's a good thing. So as long as it reduces uh, the code you need to write, I think from yeah. a developer's point of view, I think it would be a nice thing to keep it. I guess it's nice to keep the the scope closer to the declaration, so you know that it's uh what is what is actually doing. But it does feels a bit like Java ish, you know. It feels like bringing some Java ish kind of uh, things into this, which is still okay, I guess. Not not that it's a bad thing. I think I won't use it if uh, I have other public properties that are not in the constructor, or other, yeah, or other other, yeah. So which means your constructor method need to then do additional things, lah. Yeah. As in, if you're passing in stuff that's not meant to be promoted, like if they're meant to be private methods or doing uh, like transient uh, variables, then you probably need to then uh, add some stuff into your constructor itself to do stuff, la, right? Uh, I guess you can mix and match. La. Yeah, you can like pass in two, two arguments that are meant to be promoted and the rest are you know, not really meant to be promoted and you just use it as transient variables in the constructor and then throw away. La. So it's like uh, I prefer to declare all my variables in uh, one place. So it's either I declare all the public properties outside the constructor, or I declare that all of them inside the constructor as uh, for for uh, property promotion. Yeah. But that's a personal preference, uh. Yeah, I think it'd be quite confusing if we have like some declaration in the constructor and some of them is outside like say you have like two two or three other public methods uh, of uh, public attributes that are not uh, declared in the constructor then you have like uh, half half you have a mixture of uh, you know uh, stuff stuff that's in the pub in the constructor and then you have stuff that outside of the constructor so pros and cons I guess I guess if that's the case, then you probably want to revert back to the old desugared kind of approach, right? Uh, yeah. And as for myself, um, I've been doing Colin and TypeScript for, I think, a while already. Colin at least a year, then TypeScript at least a few years already. So, like, this is, this doesn't feel out of the norm at least for myself right cool. yeah because i i use the two other languages and they uh most of the time i declare the variables in in this shorthand shorthand syntax ah. manner yeah cool great so yeah awesome i mean it's good to know and look for look into the uh, into the magic eight ball and figure out what is what are the new things coming up in the in the near future for php right so i guess with a lot of new things coming up uh it'd be nice to be in the know so at least it won't be it won't be strange to you when you actually start using the newer newer version of the of php so yeah. when is php when is december. php oh eight december okay it's not too far away though so it's not yeah. bad yeah Cool. Well, the alpha release should be soon, isn't it? Like July mm -hmm. or June. Because uh, I, I remember currently the alpha release. But in any case, uh, the if I get the email, then I'll I will send it to our PHP Telegram group. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you are in the Telegram group, you'll be one of the first to know right. when the alpha gets released. <laughs> true. True. Yeah. You want to show the link to the... Is it possible to show the link on the Telegram? Uh, uh, <laughs> Never mind, we've put it in the show notes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, links okay. are in the show notes. Go, go check it out. So yeah. 
Anyway, so that's us, uh, the PH Singapore PHP podcast. So we have Zion, Zion, and Hui Ren, and myself, and Michael. So uh, three of us uh, carry on this PHP thing. So yeah, we we welcome uh, guests in our podcast. So if you're interested in joining us in the, in the future podcast, do drop us a line uh, in our meetup group. We are available on meetup.com. You can find us there. And uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, uh, PHP Singapore, right? So yeah, that's us. And uh, till next month, or, to, or rather till our next episode. See you all soon. Bye. 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 And recording stopped.